we have some uh, good news for Ireland. Um, last uh, Friday, the, March the 8th, the Irish voted for two referendums. Uh, there were constitutional ones. One was about the family and one was about care. They sound a bit anticlimactic, but if you see the result, it is far from it. Now, let's have a look at some of the tweets before we we say a bit more. Now, from Cillian, says, breaking, the Irish government has conceded defeat in both referendums held today, which would have made the Irish constitution more progressive and gender neutral. Both referendums were rejected in a landslide. The Irish people have had enough of woke ideology. Hi folks, sorry to interrupt the video, but I wanted to let you know that we've introduced a feature on the website that allows you to purchase individual videos. So if you go to lowseas.com and see a piece of premium content that you really want to watch, you can pay for it and it is yours forever. Next one from UK Justice Forum. Irish PM Leo Varadkar and Irish government suffer two humiliating defeats in Irish referendums after the people overwhelmingly reject their woke objectives in favor of traditional family values. Now, I will say a bit in a minute about what these referendums were, but what is really interesting is that it seems clear that the Irish government violated Scarface's law. Have you watched Scarface? I haven't. There's a what, the, yeah, Scarface. The, yeah, yeah. He's he's just super clear. Don't get high with your own supply. <laughs> okay. And this is what a lot of people in, in favor of progressive politics are doing. And it's a really funny If thing. I remember the film, he does quite a lot. Yeah, but he told people not to. Oh, I see. So he violated his own law. Yeah. Right. But apparently, you know, a lot of progressive politicians do. And I'll right. explain how this happened. So no one goes on a referendum to lose, let alone lose by a landslide. Why? Because you could say that referendums are a bit unique in what? In the following sense, that when you have an election, a conventional election, people vote for the agenda they think is overall best without focusing on each specific element of it. Mm. When you have a referendum, you just have a clear discussion about one topic. So the very fact that they would go and lose on two referendums by a landslide shows that they are utterly out of touch with the people they claim to represent. Well, yeah, because you don't, you don't call a referendum unless you're pretty certain you're going to win. So we, we've had a couple in this country. One was on the alternative vote system, and it got a thumping rejection, as they intended. Yeah. And they intended the Brexit one to also be a thumping one, but it came out as a narrow win, like 52 to 48. Yes. But a landslide rejection of a, of a referendum is, is a massive balls up. Yes, and I think that uh, it shows that the Irish government just doesn't care about what the people it claims to represent, think, and it just thinks it knows better on everything. But speaking of rulers and people who didn't think that uh, they always knew everything, you know who had no prob problem delegating duties to people he thought were capable? What Marcus Aurelius. Ah. If you want to find out more about Marcus Aurelius, uh, some of you think he's the GOAT, check out our website, The Meditations of Marcus Aurelius. Symposium 61, with five pounds per month, you can gain access to all the premium content. And let me just say, this was a marathon discussion. It's close to three hours. Um, Bo and I chat about uh, the history and philosophy of Marcus Aurelius. So by all means, check, subscribe on our website and watch it. Is that the guy from Gladiator? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I know all about him. He is the father of the really bad guy who yes, came afterwards. Yes, yeah, I, I, I know all about this guy, yeah. Yeah, right. Let's go and focus on the referendum. So, on the two referendums. So, it was, let's say, a constitutional referendum in both cases, which allows Irish uh, citizens to decide whether or not to change the wording of the constitution. And they're talking about two referendums. One was the family referendum, and the other was the care referendum. Mm -hmm. Let's see what both of them involved. So the family amendment amends, uh, proposed to amend some articles in the, in the constitution that have to do with the family and the other that have to do with care. Let me just explain here exactly how the constitution is and how they wanted to change it. So article, the constitution, let's say uh, the article 41 has to do with the family, okay? And the Article 42 has to do with the role of uh, mothers in the house. Well, so, wait, so, 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 the, so the Irish constitution actually says at the moment that the state recognizes the family is the, is the 
fundamental group. Yes. And it actually recognizes um, marriage is sacred and all that kind of stuff. Yes. Well, let's read the whole thing out because it's beautifully worded. And the revolutionaries who did it, I think, deserve some hat tipping. Well, the state recognizes the family as the natural, primary, and fundamental unit group of society and as the moral institution possessing inalienable and in, in I don't even say that imprescriptible in, imprescriptible rights antecedent and superior to all positive law <laughs> that's the Can't constitution that. <laughs> as it is but that's okay. the thing is like you can read that you can look at that and you realize that that's written by some common sense people and that's definitely a problem for progressives they can't have that yeah because I looked at the results of this and I, I assume you're going to go to the proposal now yeah, yeah I will go yeah. the, the thing I get is I read the original constitution and that's written just normally and then that can't stand that seems to be the entire complaint well, the entire complaint has to do with what constitutes a family and the role of marriage in the family in the first case. Now, the second case, you will see in a bit, because I was trying to understand what the fuss was about it, but you'll see if we examine both referendums together, we start having an idea of what the Irish government tried to do, yeah. and it will continue uh, to, to do in the future. So it says also here, the amendment proposes to introduce a particular clause and, it, and to change the article to, uh, to saying the state recognizes the family, whether founded on marriage or other durable relationships, as the natural primary and fundamental group of society and as a moral institution possessing inalienable and imprescriptible rights antecedent and prior to all positive law. So they are trying well, I don't, to... I don't know what that means. I, I, I yeah. knew what the other paragraph meant, but I don't know what a durable relationship is. Uh, no one does. And that's the whole purpose right. of it, that it's arbitrary and how they can you, use it arbitrarily. Well, how would something you can't define have rights? Well, according to Helen McEntee, uh, the far right is a great problem in Ireland, but she cannot define either, uh, uh, um, right. either. But the point is that this allows them to arbitrarily choose who is a member of a family and therefore who they think deserves greater legal status and economic support. And they're going to be completely arbitrary in how they're going to give that. And they would do that more easily if the referendums passed. Can we read that last line there, what they deleted? Yeah. So the other part of the proposal yeah. is they delete this phrase. So it says, the state pledges itself to guard with special care the institution of marriage on which the family is founded. And they just deleted the word on which the family is founded. Yes. And then they say they will protect it against attack. Yes. Yeah, so they wanted to change completely the definition of the family in order to give legal state uh, pr um, increased legal protection to groups that they can arbitrarily define by saying that they are members of, of uh, but also think, durable relations. Think about how cool that is. Part of your constitution literally said, the founding fathers there when they're sitting down after the revolution, sit down and write that the purpose of the government is to protect the family and marriage against attack. I mean, this is just great, just great wording. The idea that you're going to come along from Pakistan and say this needs changing. Yeah, no wonder you lost. Talking you'll, about. You'll, you'll see, you'll see. So, um, Dan, are you aware of what a durable relationship is? No. I'm not either. Are you, Callum? I mean, presumably somebody you've been in a business relationship for years would qualify. You've been in the cell next to you for years would qualify. I mean, we have a video here of a politician trying to explain what it is. Oh, okay. Can we have this? Worried as I'm single by choice, I could end up not being single inadvertently. Everyone can marry, can divorce, can live together formally. Now I cannot even have a boyfriend or I could end up with someone claiming part of my home. Oh dear! Right, this that, I presume is the durable uh, relationship. It's a durable I'm, relationship question. Yeah, yeah it is. No, it's, it's it's an interesting question as part of the discourse around this. You can't end up in a durable relationship by accident. You must mean it. But whatever else durable relationship means, it must mean something where people intend to okay, be let, committed to one let's, another. Let's uh, so, scenario this. Do so we've got two people yeah. who are um, house sharing, uh, and they're they're pals. Uh, and they share this house. One of the parties owns that house and the other is staying there, uh, perhaps paying rent, but as pals, perhaps not. As pals, perhaps not. And yeah. suddenly it decides, hang on a second. I know we're not having sex. We're not sleeping together. But this is definitely a durable relationship. It is, yeah, but it's not a family. They're friends. 
I, I think that so actually is easy to, to answer. That. I don't think How so. How do we know you're not having sex? I will know. You either say you are or you're not. Nobody knows from the outside. That's your private life. What if I um, lie? You, you know, could we that have, not be argued in the courts then? It could, but it, it, remember the expression durable relationship is intended to be put here on the basis that it's a durable relationship defining a family unit in society. Suppose so you must one of the parties, the owner unit. of the flat has a child. Every place and yes. This, and the, both p- people are not, you know, acting necessarily as parents, but certainly in that From the outside, it might look that way. Well, if they look like they're in an intimate relationship or were in an intimate relationship, they might look like they're a family from the outside, but they must mean to be that. A durable relationship. But I think this person is worried that the other person might mean to be that. And I, I, I think there is actually an answer to this. First of all, you can't end up living with a boyfriend or a girlfriend. So basically, she's saying that somebody, somebody has to come. That, that's essentially what it comes down to. Well, somebody isn't coming is not a durable relationship. <laughs> I don't know. She uh, was the chair of the Electoral Commission, Miss uh, Justice uh, Mary Baker, and she tried to make things clear. Now, uh, I don't know what constitutes a durable relationship. Did you get a good idea? Yeah, I, now, now I get the idea. Some, so, it's, it's the same with all of these Sexless besties. marriages aren't durable relationships. Their, their entire philosophy comes down to coming. That's why you've got pride flags up and down the bloody high street in London. It's just come everywhere with these people. That's all it comes but down to. But they have to mean it. That's getting clips. But you have to mean it. Can I mention something, though? Because well, we've had this in the UK yeah. in debates. It's not got to this point of law, right? So this Labour Party had this debate, and I clipped it for the Labour conference, where they were arguing, and of course this only ever goes one way, which is that if a man, so if one of us gets a girlfriend, and you stay with her, she comes around to your place and stays for a couple of years, she's entitled to half your shit. You haven't married her, but she's now entitled to half your shit. Yeah. Mm. Never agreed to this. But so you would then have to be extremely careful not to keep a woman around for more than two years. It increases the arbitrariness of people who are in power. Because they can constantly uh, choose yeah. arbitrarily who deserves, who they think deserves increased legal protection and who doesn't. But let us just uh, try to unpack it here because, you know, she's supposed to be an educated person who is going to illuminate us about it. And I got from this that to be in a durable relationship, you have to mean it. And when he asked her, you know, some people, how do you know where some people are not having sex? She she said, uh, "Well, I'll know," but then she said, "It's a private it's a private matter." So all of this is just she a trust it. trust me, bro. Word salad. Anyway, um, and that's at another place. She says that the durable relationship doesn't always define a family, which is word salad. <laughs> anyway, now let's go to the the other the care uh, to. I want to remind people before we go to the care amendment to see that uh, the Irish government has uh, people who are a bit. Um, unhinged unhinged and not comfortable, let's say, with the language they're using and not knowledgeable of the language they're using. And here is uh, Justice Helen Mac- Justice Minister Helen McEntee, who constantly talks about the far right. And she was asked to give a definition and she said, I'm not sure there is one. So yeah. these people who can't define words that they constantly use to demonize, they want to change the Irish constitution and introduce vaguer terms to the one it already has. On that point, chats raised something interesting, which is um, what kind of sex? Because, of course, she didn't define that either. So chats debating whether or not a blowjob counts as a durable relationship. (laughs) Sincerely, I mean, she not only has to check who's coming, but how you're coming. matters. I don't know. It has to do with how much it lasts or something. The positions count? (laughs) If you use marital aids, is that not okay? I don't... I I I think (laughs) think the key... the, the key legal definition, and they write this in at some point, has to be the coming. If you come as long as somebody is coming, then they can take your money. So you have a durable relationship with yourself. Anyway, <laughs> so it wouldn't matter because you wouldn't, you wouldn't take your own money then, would you? I suppose not. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it all comes down to wealth. Uh, you would know because that person would, would, have, would constantly play I Touch Myself, the song. You know, the every time I think. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. There is a song called I Touch Myself. Is this the Irish yeah, I'll national find anthem it. now? No, no. <laughs> that is also getting to it. it would be, anyway, so here, here is a thread by David Thunder, who I have interviewed and we have spoken also on our symposium episode, 
on why he thought that the Irish uh, citizens should vote no. You can definitely check it out. It's a very interesting thread here. He says a lot of the intricacies about it. Anyway, so let's go to look at the results and also look at the constituencies. So the family referendum was defeated. The government was defeated. 32.31% voted in favor of them. 67.69% voted against them. And in the care referendum, which so, we will say in a bit, because you have to understand both of them. It's almost 75%. It's almost 75%. There. Yeah. And beautiful. Yeah. And let's look I mean, at he, the... even even Putin doesn't get that higher vote share when he when he wins an election. He actually doesn't. Let's, <laughs> let's look at the constituencies because this shows something really interesting. Yeah. Where would you expect to find more support for the progressive agenda? Oh, and it's always in the cities. Okay. Yeah. Really so, rich part of the city. So you see here, if you look at it, all constituencies voted against against wow. it. Uh even even Dublin voted against it, but you'll see that in Dublin you find the, the, only... the highest um, yes votes. So here in North what, what, Dublin you have 40%. Yeah. Uh, Dublin South Central you have uh, 34 but here if you see right. you have increased support there. So 49% Dublin Bay South. But there's one green place. Yeah. However the hell you I say that. I think the dune log <laughs> here. Point. 50.29 yeah. just scraped over line in the most regime bit of uh, Dublin. And you'll see also in Wicklow that is right next to it, you also have close to 40%. So I don't know, something goes on here in, in that Dublin. Be it's beautiful to see that the entire country of Ireland is basically unified in the sense of bugger off. Yeah. And yeah. if you hear, see here in the north in Donegal, there was even less than 20% of a yes vote. 80.21% was negative. We should have let them run this in Northern Ireland just yeah. to get more red on the map. And if you see here, all constituencies have voted uh, against <laughs> that. Except, I mean, look at that. Yeah, except for the <laughs> one I showed you. The thing is, the government must have known that it was facing an uphill battle on this one, but it just could not let the family stand but, in law. They had to destroy it, but, and so they just... Have to, but there's a reason why I think I said in the beginning that they fall, uh, they fell high with their own supply. They go high with their own supply because I think that when you were talking about you know the woke karate, those who you know think this way, they have a very bad flow of information among amongst their ranks because yeah. they constantly try to restrict free speech, and the the Irish government has one of the worst uh, bills. That uh, against free speech, yeah. they no one wants to give bad news to the leader. No one wants to upset the woke karate. Let's say that's how you get you know repeated failures in all sorts of fronts. For instance, with the Doritos we were talking last uh, week. Okay, that's a uh, anyone who remembered what happened with Bud Light would say that that's a bad idea. They did it regardless. Now let's go to the care referendum. Now this one I found way more interesting. I don't know if you've got the wording for it. Uh, yeah, I will. I, I do. So let's go back to the wording. Because the wording of the care one is very, very based, in which it's basically just arguing, should women have to work? And uh, the position yeah. of the Irish revolutionaries was, no. Why, why would we want them working? You so stupid. it says here, the constitution as is says, the state recognizes that by her life within the home, woman gives to the state a support without which the common, the common good cannot be achieved. And the state shall therefore endeavor to ensure that mothers shall not be obliged by economic necessity to engage in labor to the neglect of their duties in the home. Now, do you see? <laughs> I mean, that's, just, that's awesome. I didn't even know that was in there. <laughs> that's brilliant. There that is, is so based. There Women is... should take care of the family. And if they ever have to work... So they can have to do that. No, no. The state should step in and make sure women have what they need to take but care of the family. I, I just love the fact that we've got a country in Europe that has it written into their constitution, make me a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's, no, but it doesn't say that they shouldn't work. Is that, that you know, because the family is important, yes. no woman should be uh, by economic necessity led to that. So it doesn't yeah. say, yeah. She shouldn't have to go and work to take yeah. care of a family. But it has. She her primary role is taking care of the family, and that has a greater duty than anything else that can be achieved. But if this stands, if this stands, how do you get the birth rate down low enough to justify massive immigration? This has to go, clearly. Well, 
Um, let's say that there's a word there that the Wokarati were unhappy with because they think it's not in line oh, with God, the modern the... value. What, which word is that? Woman. Mother. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, okay, so they would. the proposal is to reject these two articles and substitute the state recognizes the, the provision of care by members of a family to one another by reason of the bonds that exist among them gives to society a support without which the common good cannot be achieved and shall strive to support such provision. Must but, again, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, well, I, this is the thing about That's what I thought. That's what I thought. And I was looking at it. Right. I couldn't understand. But the point is, I, said, I thought that the government was trying to put forward two referendums. And I said, how would that translate into action if the former referendum passed. Oh, so right. if they passed the former referendum, it would imply that they could arbitrarily define which form of association constitutes a family yep. and therefore requires increased legal protection uh, and economic support. Because this bill is about the economic support that the state should give to Irish mothers. So, but, so you think this is a way of directing money towards the people who do the dress up stuff? It's it's a way to di direct money against anyone that the government thinks it's going to be politically expedient for them to support. So okay. what I want to say is that if they pass the first referendum yep. and they con and they change the constitution and family was not defined in terms of marriage but in terms of durable relationships that was incredibly vague. Yes. And then that passed as well that says that family members support each other and because they support each other, they need some economic support in the way mothers did right. the, before the amendment had that gone through. So, so wait, then, wait, you, wait, then you could on. have infinity Africans and infinity welfare. Yeah. Right. But and also we could, we could scan the system so bloody easily. Yep. We could just say, you, me, Stelios, we're a family now. Yeah. Uh, we, we have sex, trust us, Irish government. Yeah, and then she'd know. Yeah, she'd, she'd know. She'd know that, that therefore, weird, that give us money. That woman will want to turn up and have a good sniff to make sure. Well, I'm not. I don't think she's actually got the sniff detector. That's all I'm saying. So <laughs> you understand what they, they would do if they passed both referendums? They would, it would have just destroy the country. Like yeah, but they would have less of a legal uh, problem with arbitrarily defined uh, groups yes. that require economic support in exchange for political support. Yes. So we have here, um, let's, we have here Sky News saying breaking the Irish government has been defeated between referendums on changing the country's constitution. But Leo Varadkar said that he wanted to remove very old fashioned language in the country's constitution. You know, Sorry, you, you proposed destroying the country from the core. Yeah, but it's old fashioned <laughs> language, Callum. <laughs> but it's old fashioned. It's, yeah. Go to hell. I'm so proud of them, frankly. Yes. But, it, it's uh, like saying, you know, death is preferable to being old fashioned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> death before uh, dishonor. I don't think understood in progressivist terms. The level of Pakistani scams you could run as well. Yeah. So here we have a very interesting article uh, published in Gript by um, Jason Osborne, who is talking about the law society whose council decided to back the government. That whose members started talking against it. And they say, no, this doesn't <laughs> express us. Okay. And towards yeah, the end, great. towards the end, uh, the president of the Law Society, uh, that was prior to the to the referendum. Uh, the pre president of the Law Society, Barry McCarthy, said that the nation's foundational legal document should reflect the values of modern Irish society. Can you imagine the level of disconnect with the Irish people when they vote, uh. when, they, when the result is, is this over here? Yeah. Well, they, no, they, they, they have the nerve. This is brilliant because they're saying yeah. the modern Irish society is foreigners or weirdos. And Ireland turned around and went, no, modern Irish society is Irish. Go to hell. Yeah. We exist. We remain. Because normally this isn't a problem because the politicians just do what they want. But in this case, it's actually written into law. Yeah, some based stuff. Yeah, so that and and it's and it's not just law; it's the constitution. So they have to change it. So so they can't do their normal lying thing. It's very obvious what it is that they're doing. Yeah, and let's look at uh, why Helen McEntee was going to uh, vote for a yes. She says here, "White woman, I will be voting Same. that way, and when I do so, I believe I will be voting for a more modern, inclusive Ireland. Our constitution <sighs> matters, 
It matters that its language and its contents reflect the Ireland we are and the Ireland we want to become. Who is we? Yeah. Now, oh, sorry, very small selection of weird white women. Yeah. You can see here who is we. Uh, we does not refer to the Irish people. We, we refers to the members of the Irish government, maybe to that section there. One rich neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why it goes on. Please tell us in the comments, why would you think that this constituency here... I saw would... people online saying, it's well, literally, that's where the rich people live. Okay. That's it. It's that simple. Out of touch lunatics. Yeah. And uh, one thing, because as you said, Dan, obviously there can be um, all sorts of stretches of these proposed constitutional amendments. And uh, a lot of the, uh, they could be about immigration laws. And I think we should just end the segment by uh, showing this clip with Senator uh, McDowell talking to Helen McEntee about a case that she should be aware of because it was about her. Um, her ministry, and also end with a comment afterwards. Richmond sat where you sat at the moment, Helen, and he told Claire that there would be serious consequences. And I'm in a position now just to remind you that in 2022, uh, a case was brought against you as minister by um, a, a Croat national, and he had married a Brazilian girl in Belfast, and he had brought her back down here in your department, gave her a five-year work permit. They split up after one year and he met a Colombian girl and uh, they, she was a student in Ireland and she wanted to resist deportation. And she uh, then decided uh, that uh, she would claim that she was part of a durable relationship. And your department said, this is ridiculous. Uh, you have one married uh, uh, a person and one uh, um, contemporaneous um, a, a, a durable relationship claim being made for two women to remain in Ireland. And that uh, case was referred uh, in 2022 to the European uh, Court of Justice. Now, it hasn't proceeded there for different reasons. But I mean, this shows the confusion that there will be in immigration law. Uh, and you, your department was on the receiving end of this. And you are named as the, as the respondent in those proceedings. Amazing. Amazing. So when she was asked yeah. about this with immigration law, she doesn't agree with her own stance. Yeah. Now, I want to end with a comment because what we are looking at here, this stage, let's say, of the culture war and progressivist politics nowadays, that governments are supposed to represent the people, at least in representative democracies and republics. And the first, let's say, center of power that they should listen to is the people. They... They should, let's say, um, listen to the people that they claim to represent. Otherwise, they're not representing anyone except their own interest. So the Irish government has done anything but that. And it has tried to penalize free speech, to restrict it. And this means that it tries to control what is in people's mind and how people act. And it doesn't care about what they think. So I want to say that what we see here is a skin suiting of some political parties that in the name of representative democracy argue in an authoritarian and sometimes aspiring totalitarian way. Because what they try to do is they literally try to enter into the minds of us and try to make us internalize their own linguistic mechanism that they try to do in order to use thought control. And I think that this is... This is something that uh, everyone should uh, be mindful of. This is a big victory for the Irish people. But unfortunately, everyone needs to remember that the woke don't stop. And, th and this doesn't stop because fundamentally, the left understands to a degree that it has lost the native population of all Western countries. And the only way they think that they can get away with it electorally and win power is by changing the electoral mix. So. Good for you, Irish people, but be mindful and be vigilant. If you appreciated that episode from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site, such as the contemplation series at this episode on how politicians try to manipulate you. If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow it on Twitter at lotuseaters underscore com on Twitter. Thank you and goodbye.